All right. So welcome to the Carmen Brand J Show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you uh, for doing this. This is this is huge, especially because you know I don't have much history. So you appreciate the trust. And, well, uh, you have a history with me. <laughs> sure, yeah, but not yeah. not a podcast. Oh, okay, no. okay, okay. So, but <laughs> okay. So yeah, we haven't seen each other for a little while. It's about but maybe six years, I think. Yeah, six, let's, seven years. Let's um. Where should we start? Let's start maybe where we met. Okay. And then, um, then I, I want to talk about your your business, about Magnus Mode, about um, everything that's going on with you. Okay. And uh, yeah, so so tell us, tell everyone how how we met. How did we? How did we? Well, first meet? four score and seven years ago, mm-hmm. uh, I was starting a company that was basically dedicated to helping people with autism, like my brother to navigate the world with greater independence. So I had won some money uh, through a social business competition uh, called Project Wildfire through the Center for Social Innovation. And then I I had outsourced the development of the first version of the product to China. And I got that back and I remember just feeling over my head (laughs) because I have a history and political science background. I'm not a developer. So I started thinking, okay, I need to get in touch with developers and people that can help me to take this to the next level because what I got back wasn't um, wasn't, what wasn't what I expected. Yeah. So above all, I wanted to meet with somebody who could help me to understand the architecture piece and the design of you know bringing this idea, this concept to life. Yeah. So I remember thinking, okay, I'm, I'm in Scarborough. Uh, I'm near Centennial College. <laughs> it's just literally five minute drive. Mm-hmm. And I remember I called up uh, the Applied Research and Innovation Center, and I spoke yeah. to Pernima, and I said, look, this is my situation, and can you guys help? And it just so happened that there was a program that uh, was run, I think you were you were the manager of it, mm-hmm. and um, there was you were able to get some students together mm-hmm. and work on the prototype that I had received. Yeah, yeah. How did you even hear about that? Um, Did you just like I just called. And stuff I just and... called. <laughs> but how'd you? But how'd you know that Centennial? I did like, not know. Stuff? No, I had no idea. I oh, just. Wow. I literally just called. Cold, like... cold call. You know, a lot of the business, the success that I've had, has yeah. been just doing like... something, just having an idea and just doing yeah. it, regardless of the outcome, what it's going to be. Yeah. I just picked up the phone and I called. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. So I remember. Yeah, the first time meeting you. And you showed me what you had had built. And I was like, Do you remember hmm. what you said? Yeah, I said. Wh- well, I just asked. I said, "Where's so?" Because I, I, you had somebody with with you, like a developer or something, or a student or something. Yeah, was I on think it. so. So I asked. Yeah. So I just said, "Can you show me your database? I, I want to see, like, you know, basically the like the back end yeah. of it, right?" And then I couldn't. Like, he didn't really understand what I was talking about. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. All right, all right. Okay. There's a problem here. Yeah. So, so I think that was a really good program. I think the the colleges are really doing something good there. Well, you know, I think it was just such a helpful moment in the trajectory of the development of our company, and I just, I really am humbled and thankful for the for the colleges to be to offer something like that. Yeah. And for the opportunity to to go to go to move forward without having to spend a huge amount of money because at that point we really didn't have any revenue yeah. and we were reliant on partnerships more so to get us to that next level and it's really hard in the early days to get that sort of momentum and keep that momentum without having oodles of cash yeah 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 I think sometimes you know I worked on a few projects there that weren't very good <laughs> but I think I think like more about half of them were like like your company that was actually something real that was gonna be gonna be made, but yeah that was a really fun time. Um, well, I remember we we did uh, after we built kind of the first iteration, mm-hmm. we did like a test with Autism Ontario. Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah, in their camp. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then you you literally would come and pick me up in the morning. Yeah. And then we'd drive to the camp, and then we'd do the, the research yeah. study. Yeah. Um, and then we'd come back. And I think my brother was involved, too. Troy was involved in that as well. And, and yeah. my other brother, Eric. Yeah. So it was real grassroots, like, from the get-go. It was all about community, and in particular, 
the Scarborough community yeah. was really good to us. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Scarborough is where it's at. Scarborough right? is where it has, it's at, it has, huh? a, it has a uh, it has a vibe, a negative but... reputation, I think. But it, you know what? I think anybody who has lived here and 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 has grown here mm-hmm. knows. Scarborough for what it is. Yeah. It's it's beyond the accent, the Scarborough accent. There's a Scarborough <laughs> accent? Yeah. You, I didn't know that. You have it. I do? <laughs> yes. I've only lived in Scarborough for like five, ten years. Not See? Even. See, you just did it. I did? <laughs> what, what did I do? Well, it's kind of like, it's like this little lilt. A lilt? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah. It's like, an, I don't know. It's, it's hard really? to describe. Okay. But I will be downtown Toronto or I'll be in Chicago or New York or whatever. And I'll talk to somebody on the street, and I'll be like, "Are you, do you happen to be from Scarborough?" No way. Yeah, wow. and they're like, "Yeah, man, yeah, I'm from Scarborough, yeah." Oh, okay. <laughs> but you know, Scarborough is like twice the size of Ottawa. It is. There's six hundred thousand people that live in Scarborough, or oh, even seven hundred. Right? It's huge. Well, are they including Pickering? In no. no, no, like okay. Scarborough proper. There's like oh, wow. there's six hundred thousand. Right? Wow, Ottawa's I did not know it. It well, feels a lot smaller <laughs> when mm-hmm. you're in here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, it's packed, right? But I'm definitely proud of my roots. And like I, I was telling um, uh, your dad yeah. that I come back every weekend yeah. to visit my family. My family still lives here. Um, they're about 15 minutes from here. Yeah. And uh, I live in Waterloo. Yeah. So I drive back about an hour and a half each way. And I drive back to just spend time with my family. My friends are still here. Yeah. And it's just, it will always be home to me no matter where I end up living. Okay. Tell me a little bit about that. About, about your family. Loop? No, about, about your family. family. Yeah, so let's... let's okay, we'll, so okay. We, we established the meeting point. Let's go back <laughs> okay. a little bit. So, All right, so I was born, I grew up. No. No, but... Uh, <laughs> but so when did your uh, your family immigrated here, right? My family... Well, my grandparents. Mm. My grandparents immigrated here. So you are um, second generation then. I'm third generation third. only because my, my parents were born in Guyana, but they moved over so young. Right. So... Um, my grandparents came over, uh, my grandpa came over first, okay. one at a time, and he brought over the three kids, which yeah. included my mom. Yeah. And he was raising them for like a year before my grandmother even came over. Mm. And so there's stories and there's pictures of my grandpa pushing three little kids in a pram. He calls it a pram, so <laughs> mm. I call it a pram. Mm. Up the street, and he's a, he's a big guy. He was an Olympian. So he was wow. first man to represent Guyana. In the na- uh, weightlifting. Oh, wow. The clean oh, and jerk. So, oh, yeah, so he is a big, big guy. guy. <laughs> he's a big guy, and he huh. would have all three on his shoulders oh, yeah. sometimes. Wow. And he would just, you know, he's kind of the, pat- I guess, patriarch. Sometimes sure. it has a negative, uh, you know, yeah, connotation no, these you. days. But yeah. he's kind of the, he's the guy that we he's all look alive? to. Yes, he's yeah? still alive. Okay. He just celebrated his 90th, oh, wait, sorry, 89, 89th birthday. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So what was he doing here when he came? Like, so he, he, wor- work? he worked uh, in customs, Canada oh. customs. And um, mm. and he, you know, he worked his way up the ranks. Yeah. And then my grandma, he, we, he saved enough money. My grandmother came over. She worked at uh, Kingston Penitentiary. So she was a, a, a guard. <laughs> wow. And, you know, to this day, her personality reflects that because she's very much like, <sighs> This is the rule. Yeah. This is how we're going to do it. You know, very mm-hmm. to the point. Yeah. And, um, you know, they're just wonderful people. And I don't think I would be where I, where I am now. Mm-hmm. Definitely would not be where I am now if they hadn't several times stepped in and helped the kids in our family, like my generation, to go to university, to uh, get my first car, mm-hmm. to, you know, do things that I just because of our circumstances, we would not have been able to do it. Yeah. And so I'm just forever grateful to them. And they're just, they're still very much a part of our lives. And I was telling you about Christmas. I'm looking forward to Christmas mm-hmm. because everybody comes together under my grandparents' roof. Yeah. We have a huge sleepover. <laughs> and yeah. we play video games in the morning. <laughs> and then we have, uh, you know, we have a traditional Caribbean fair. So we have, uh, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Uh, oh, I'm getting roti and curry and, uh, you know, stuff like that from Guyana. My dad's from Jamaica, so I'm not as close to his side of the family just because mm. they are still mostly in Jamaica. But uh, I definitely have the Jamaican roots in our cuisine and in our culture and music and dancing. And uh, yeah, my family is super important to me. And I guess it is the reason I started my company okay. is because of my brother. Yeah. Um, so directly below me. So I've got, I've got, how many, yeah. uh, how many siblings do I have? 
<laughs> you need there's to so account? many. <laughs> no, okay. uh, so there's five in total. Yeah. Including me, and okay. I'm in the middle. All right. And then below me is Troy. Okay. And uh, Troy has autism. Yeah. And so him and I are, you know, we tend to be cl- very close. Yeah. Like of all of our siblings. Yeah. And uh, yeah, he's the reason I started the company because I noticed that he was struggling with day to day activities and, and um, you know, he wanted more independence in his life. Mm-hmm. And I definitely wanted to help him, support him to be able to have that agency and that livelihood, especially after graduating from high school, which is kind of the cutoff point for a lot of people yeah. with special needs. So you mean like because he was getting support and then you were. Yeah, the school system, you know, for all of its inherent flaws <laughs> it, it it does offer that structure and that support yeah. and they get used to it and they you know they they really enjoy it and then at the age of 21 school's over yeah uh and then there's really nothing there's a gap yeah of how do i get how do i keep going how do i get into the community how do i continue to develop my skills yeah and so that was a gap that magnus mode needed to fill and uh you know i was at a uh, an event a couple of nights ago, a school event, where I met with parents and, and people with special needs aged 18 to 32. Excuse me. And this young man that I was talking to, he's 32, and he was like, I've been here for seven years, and he has autism. And he's like, I've been here for seven years, and I don't want to go anywhere else. I want to keep going to school. I want to keep going to school. And I said, why? Why do you want to keep going to school? And he, he wasn't able to articulate the exact reasons, but he said, because it's where I am, because it's where I be. Mm. And I was like, interesting. Hmm. You know, it's it's almost a sense of belonging that gets stripped away yeah. when they graduate. Hmm. Hmm. So tell me how, let's talk, let's talk about Magnus a little, Magnus mode. Like just let's, what, what is it? What it, let's give a little, you know, the, the elevator pitch. Okay. And we can talk <laughs> about maybe how, you know, how your brother helped inspire you for that and and stuff like that. Okay, sure. So Magnus Mode is the company that I formed um, to help my brother. Mm -hmm. It is focused on developing technology that enables people with cognitive special needs, including autism, Asperger's, Down syndrome, to navigate more freely and independently and inclusively in the world. So that's basically the, you know, that's the one liner, but how how it works is we develop products such as what we have now is a mobile app. Yeah. And the mobile app is kind of like a card collection type paradigm where users who are people with special needs are collecting digital card decks that walk them through everyday life. So for example, brushing teeth. So you'd collect the card deck, you download the card deck and then follow along with the instructions step by step, visuals, audio and text. Picture a baseball card Mm -hmm. and the baseball card has the image at the top. It has the uh, text at the bottom. So step one of brushing your teeth, get your toothbrush. Step two, put the toothpaste on your toothbrush. Step three, brush the top teeth. Mm -hmm. Step four, et cetera, et cetera. And you're swiping through and reenacting each step. And it was inspired by the fact that I used to draw out these step-by-step activities for Troy. Hmm. Like when we were growing up, I drew it out, how to brush your teeth, and I pasted it to the wall of our apartment. Um, And so the walls of our apartment were literally a scrapbook. And my parents, at first I drew it on the wall. <laughs> and my parents were like, no, 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 paper. <laughs> yeah. And then I drew it on paper and I pasted it around. And then he would go to the bathroom, he'd look above the sink and he'd follow the instructions. Or he'd go above his closet and it was getting dressed for school. Or he would, uh, you know, go to the fridge and here's snack time rules. So it's very similar to how people instruct children. Mm-hmm. Um, but the guidance and the visual step-by-step Uh, instructions are something that's needed all the time and you know my brother has cooked the same marble cake with my mom for over 25 years and to this day and he's gonna cook it tonight (laughs) to this day he wants to refer to the recipe Hmm. he doesn't want to miss a step you cannot move forward until he knows Mm -hmm. this is the right step Mm. I'm not going to get to the end and find out I missed, I forgot to put the vanilla in Mm -hmm. or, you know, it's going to turn out the way that it's supposed to Mm. turn out. And that sort of thinking echoes in different areas of their lives, going to the airport, taking a bus, going grocery shopping, meeting a friend. Right. It's having that structure. And this is what Magnus Cards, our product provides, is that structure Mm. 
Yeah. What is going to happen? What can you expect? How can you prepare for it? Mm. And then when you're there, how do you get through it? Right. And so we have, you know, users all over the world. I think we're at 72 countries right now worldwide. Wow. And um, they're writing us and sending us pictures about how this is helping them. And, and in most cases, it's the support workers sending this because they, they can communicate more effectively. And they're sending and they're saying, you know, usually I have to take my child by the arm and lead him through or her through. Mm -hmm. And now they're saying, Mom, we have to do this. Mm. This is what's next. Hmm. And independence means different things for different people. And my brother uh, will probably always struggle if you, you know, tell him to go on a plane, go to Jamaica, stay there four weeks and come back alone. Yeah. But he can check in by right. himself. Yeah. He can go to the airport bathroom by himself. He can go through security screening if he has the right support. Right, right. Okay, super interesting. Wow. Sorry, I talk and I... No, that... <laughs> yeah, no, I that's... I'm not talking to Yeah, you know, I like that a lot because I think a lot of times people with disabilities, they like to virtue signal sometimes, but they don't do too much about it. And I, and I like that, like, because I, I was... I kind of did the same thing for a little bit before I, I went to Centennial, right? So mm -hmm. I don't know if you know too much, but I was at uh, Ryerson University for a long time as a researcher, and we did stuff just like that. Okay, Right, okay. so we did stuff... So I worked on a project for um, close, um, well, closed captioning, right? Okay, so yeah. what we did, um, we tried to develop uh, captioning a little bit further rather than just white text on a background, right? We tried to bring in right. emotion and stuff. We did another thing where, uh, so I made software for creating video description, right? Right. We did... Um, one of the coolest projects I worked on was the Emoji Chair project. Did you? Oh, I, I know the I Emoji Chair. I had you because you yeah. participated yeah. in some of my yeah. experiments. Yeah. yeah. So like a vibro tactile display right. that would give access to music to people who are deaf. Um, and I just I felt really good doing that stuff. It's hard to feel bad, right? I'm not like researching bomb technology or something, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. right? It's <laughs> like we did we we live we did description for Hamlet. Oh. At UFT Heart House. Okay. It's and, one of my favorites. Yeah. And yeah. we just had, and I remember one time we had, because um, we did a, a touch tour of the stage. Oh, nice. And so we had about 20 blind people okay. come and... <laughs> just saying how, um, like doing research and work in this domain... Uh, it it feels good, right? Like you're doing stuff that actually is helping people, right? Uh, and you can see it. And I was saying how we did we described Hamlet, and so at the beginning we had a touch tour, right? And they right. so and I was just sitting, kind of sitting in the audience, watching twenty blind people going through and touching everything. I was like, geez, this is really cool. Yeah. Like you know, it's super easy to sleep at night, and I, it feels good. And I'm and I was doing stuff that I like, like tech building, technology, right, and stuff. Right. And, right. Um, so I think it's really good that you're, you're doing, you're actually doing something about it, right? Well, Not know, just like complaining or saying, yeah. Hey, where's all you guys should help us. You're actually going out and doing it. You know, it, I, I, I often say that Magnus mode was born out of passion. Mm -hmm. It was born out of love for my brother, but it was yeah. also born out of utter frustration at the fact yeah. that these individuals are growing up and becoming adults and there's an extreme lack of support and services to help them mm -hmm. and we it's 2018 and our government i think they're making strides they're they're trying to put in put some things into place but it's still very very few and far in between yeah. and there's organizations that have programs such as autism ontario um community live and they have great uh programs that are that are focused on these individuals but there's waiting lists there's mm -hmm. 22,000 people on waiting lists for and what, I, for like what so kind of so thing? for um, uh, support to help them to go onto the community, yeah. for funding so that they can participate, and in the meantime, people are at home. They're on the couch. Yeah. They're uh, you know they're facing futures of boredom and isolation and, and dependency. Yeah. And so a lot of money is going into uh, you know research in terms of what's the genetic cause or what's 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 the cause period. Right. But there's people suffering now. Yeah, yeah. And so I really wanted to create a practical tool that people can get moving, get out there. And I'm telling you, Carmen, 
We had an event um, at the ROM, uh, the Royal Ontario Museum, yeah. and we had, uh, they're, they're one of our, our clients, so they have card decks uh, on how to navigate the ROM. So we had uh, 250 people come out of all, I think the youngest person was like six, I think the oldest person was probably about maybe 38. And they all had, uh, they were all on the spectrum. And they all had their devices, so some had an Apple, an I iPhone, or Android, or whatever. And they were all using Magnus cards, and they were navigating the museum, like finding the dinosaurs. Like, okay, so step one, find the T-Rex. And it had some information on the T-Rex. So all of these people just able to do it, and just watching them and watching the look on their parents and caregiver's face, and more importantly, watching the look on their face mm. when they are empowered to do it on their own yep. and when they have that feeling of accomplishment. Like I didn't have to ask somebody to show me how to do this. Yeah. And, you know, one of the things that the parents came to me and said is, um, so one of the parents was they had four kids and the, the child with autism was one. She said, usually the, the three other kids are kind of on their own and dragging him along. And this enabled him to participate as a group and to be an active member of that group. Mm -hmm. And that is literally what we're doing on a smaller scale. It's a microcosm. We want people to participate and be part of society in ways that are meaningful to them. Hmm. So when and if they want to be part of uh, a marathon or go shopping or whatever it is, they have the tool to support them to do it. Hmm. And that is the goal, you know, my brother doesn't always want to do things like sometimes he just wants to stay home and watch TV. So he's a he's a person. Yeah. But when he does, he's got to be have that be able to have that choice because I have that choice. Yeah. Whenever I don't want to participate, yeah. I just lock myself away and paint. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And when I do, I go out, you know, so we all need that choice. It's a it's a human right. Hmm. Yeah, that's great. That's really awesome. So let's talk a little bit. Um, about the business side of things. Okay. So we'll get a little techie, maybe. <laughs> um, so tell me about, um, you were working with, um, uh, I guess you would call a mentor when I first met you. So uh, tell me about that relationship. and Julie? Like, yeah. Okay, I think it was okay. Julie. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Julie. Okay, okay. Yeah. So um, basically, you meet her? so I met her through that competition that I mentioned called oh. uh, Project Wildfire. So that was the first. So what did you like? Tell sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell, tell like what happened at this competition? You okay, submit okay. like an idea. Yeah. Okay. So what it was is uh. I, okay. So I was in university. Okay. I was in my final year, and I was thinking, you know, what do I really want to do when I graduate? Right, yeah. I don't really want to teach. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. And I'm thinking, okay, I want to start something to help my brother. I didn't have any concept of a business. Right. But then I was online, and yeah. I saw this little icon that said, Project Wildfire. Enter and you can win funding to start a social purpose business. And I said, okay, what the heck's a social purpose right. business? But, you know, yeah. I'll enter and I think I can get some funding to help build this idea that I had. And the idea was literally to digitalize and gamify that, those hand-drawn step-by-step instructions mm -hmm. in some form. And, uh, and so I entered and it involved, uh, first of all, we had to get votes online. So we had to get people to vote our idea to the top so that we'd be in the top, I think it was 25 of all the comp of all the ideas. So I went around Scarborough, Scarborough again, and I got people to hold a sign that said how they were related to somebody or how they knew somebody with autism. So some people were holding a sister, some people were holding friend, some people were holding brother, uncle, whatever. And I just talked to people and I said, do you know somebody? And then, yeah, yeah, I have a friend. And then we wrote friend. So I got, I think I got 50 people, including uh, the then chief of police, Bill Blair. Uh, was he the chief of police? Yeah. 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 So yeah. I got him to hold it and he was at the end. So I, I then edited it and made a video. So it was like kind of oh. like a, a collage, like boom, 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 yeah, boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Everybody knows somebody connected with autism. So yeah. then I got people to vote us up on this video. We got into the final round, which was like a pitch to some a panel of dragons, I guess. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I met Julie because she was my mentor mm. in the program. Right. So we were paired with a mentor, and yeah. I was paired with her. Yeah. Because she has a nephew with autism. Oh, okay. And so I pitched, and she was so impressed by my pitch because she hadn't seen it. She'd only been mentoring me kind of along the way, but she hadn't seen the final pitch. Mm. She came up to me and she said, you know, I'd like to continue mentoring you. Yeah. 
So I won the competition, by the way. Okay. So I won small amount of funding. And then Julie continued to mentor me for the next six months. And then she decided, she said to me, she's like, I'd like to invest in your company. Mm. Okay. And I was like, what does that mean? Because <laughs> I, yeah. I was like, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Because I wasn't from a business background. Yeah. So I did some research and I'm like, yeah, this could, this could be uh, a catapult to greater growth. And not only that, she had a lot of experience in making sure we had a viable model. So yeah. she helped me to fine tune that and uh, became the first investor in our company. So she matched the funding that we received from Project Wildfire. And, and that's how we that's how we got started. Yeah. So she's our founding investor and she continues to be a, a member of our board. She's the chair of our board. Yeah. And uh, and she's invested uh, since then and others have invested as well. So we've have, mm. we have about we have five investors, six now, including the state of New York, oh, wow. uh, which invested in us uh, about five weeks ago. So we won a international competition called 43 North. Yeah. And in 43 North, um, there, were six, there were 700, I think, applicants like from around the world. It was very much more intense than the competition that I just described. Yeah. So we had to go through kind of like a, it was a five to six month process where we presented our business plan, we pitched and all of this really, really intense stuff and really made me want a vacation after. Yeah. And then the final night, our final pitch was, I was pitching in front of 5,000 people uh, a panel of judges on the stage, U, uh, US VCs, um, really like, really intense guys. Yeah. And they grilled me on stage in front of 5,000 people. And then I went, to, so we were in the top 18. And then I went upstairs, upstairs and then we were called down, hey, you're in the top 10, get down, you got to pitch again. So I pitched again and uh, we won. So we won half a million in funding from, in investment, sorry, yeah. from the state of New York. Wow. We also have tax-free status in the state of New York for 10 years. Oh. <laughs> and uh, Yeah, no, it's a That's really... That's better than Amazon's deal, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and then a bunch of other perks, including um, free space when we launch our U.S. headquarters, which is what we're doing now. Wow. So we're launching a second headquarters in the U.S. Okay. Uh, and so that's kind of like what's keeping my days busy these, uh, you know, this at this time. But wow. yeah, there's a lot going on and, and hmm. incorporation and all that. Like, there's a lot. Business to stuff. Know. Eh? Business stuff. Yeah. It's exciting to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and it's exciting to be at the stage in the company where we have a viable product. We've got good cash flow. We, I'm not losing sleep over cash. Like, you know, yeah. in the early days, that's oh, how yeah. you are. In a, you always are. And, uh, and we're helping people. Yeah. And now in 2019, one of my goals is um, that I'd like to involve Troy more in yeah. terms of the day to day. Yeah. Uh, or even week to week, whatever he wants to do. Yeah. Uh, and, and in terms of the team, yeah. like I want him to be really, really involved if, yeah. if that's what he wants. So. Yeah. Well, he can certainly represent the user, right? As a, cause that, my, so yeah. my field, I'm a designer, user-centered design, that's yes. that's key, right? Yeah. You need to have Definitely. the user involved in the design process exactly. right, as much as possible. He, he's been our, um, we, we called him our lead product tester. Yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> so every new card deck that launched, so we, we have uh, uh, customers including A&W, Tim Hortons, uh, Colgate. Every new card deck series that launched, Troy was the first one to test it out. Yeah. And cool. uh, he's even been in like promotional videos for Colgate. Like they did a video that they even put in Times Square, New York. Wow. That was showing like Troy. <laughs> and he was just like, I'm like, Troy, look. He's <laughs> like, is that me? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, but he, he just, he loves being part of it. And he loves the cameras. And, mm. being, and um, you know, I've been lucky enough to receive a couple awards for what I've, for what we've done. And, uh, and he's always been there. And for my speech, I try to, I call him out and say, okay, where's Troy? <laughs> Troy, stand up. And then he stands up. He's used to it now. He stands up. <laughs> and uh, and then everybody claps for him because yeah. I'm like, look, he's the reason. Yeah. He's the reason I get up every day and do this because it's hard. Yeah. And there's times when I... I <laughs> that's okay we got we got coverage here so oh, okay. uh, it's yeah. all good. Yeah. Anyway, I was just saying there's times when, you know, it's it's like this. Yeah. And there's on the low points, you're like, oh, I just, why don't I just 
go and join the police force like everybody else in my family. <laughs> oh, hey, yeah, your family's all cops? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of cops. There's a lot of lawyers. My mm-hmm. One of my yeah. judges, law, government, police. Wow. So when I An went, entrepreneur, that's a good... Uh, oh, huh? yeah, it wasn't... It wasn't uh, <laughs> at first, my, my parents and my grandparents were like, why don't you just do something mm. safe? Uh, <laughs> but then yeah. they know me, right? I'm yeah. kind of crazy. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about... Um, so what what happened between so after you after you guys left Centennial so what was so we did a few rounds of development there and we had a prototype so then where did you so you went to Waterloo Waterloo or you're there now I was so, dragged to Waterloo okay so tell so tell me <laughs> about <feet>. that <laughs> what what's what's in Waterloo um so Waterloo is supposedly the tech capital of Canada. Okay. So, Supposedly, why it doesn't? I, you don't I, buy I, it. I, no, I I do because <laughs> there's developers galore and yeah. they seem to congregate like it's like a mecca. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, U- yeah. University of Waterloo. University yeah. of Waterloo. I think um, BlackBerry also started there. Yes. And, and Shopify is and there. Exactly. And... It's a really really techy region. So yeah. the supposedly was just because I didn't want to offend any other region that wants <laughs> well, to make that claim. Toronto's pretty pretty. Uh... <laughs> Toronto, yeah. So it's, it's a tech hub. I yeah, mean, it's, yeah. But it's a major city. It's you so know, Waterloo's pretty small. I found so. that when I when I started in Toronto, I found that um, the scene at that time was very much focused on, like, green living and, like... Like, like hippie stuff? Hippie stuff, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hipsters. And, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm allergic to hipsters. Mm. No, I'm, I am. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, so I... Um, I had it. I had an office set up near town center, and uh, it was <laughs> in Waterloo. No, in or, oh, in Toronto. In Toronto, after after we did our testing, I, I set yeah. up an office in in town center. It's just me and and Wenbin, oh, who we okay. hired. We hired a developer yeah. out of the program, yeah. Wenbin. Which is another great thing for Which that is a program, great thing, right? Yeah. Like I, I still work with a few students that I met through that oh, program. Oh, nice, right? yeah. nice, yeah. yeah. We hired him right out of there. He yeah. became our first employee. Awesome. Right out of that yeah. program. Yeah, yeah. And so it was me and Wenbin in this little office with no window. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, of course, since I'm doing the majority of the sales, I was always on the road. So yeah. poor Wenbin. He's just by himself. He's <laughs> there in the room. office. Yeah. So, you know, it was a, it was tough. And I found that it was a little bit isolating because of the area that we were in in the city. So where was that? It was near town, Scarborough Town Center. Oh, it was just a, an oh, office oh. building. Mm. And so we weren't in a hip area. There was nobody for him to... Um, yeah. to talk to and associate yeah. with. That's something, it was a learning for me. Yeah. It was learning that, hey, the staff, our, our, our employees need a culture. Right. So when Ben, he was with us maybe about two or three months, and then unfortunately yeah. he moved on. Okay. It, it is happens, what it is. Man. It's hard to keep developers. It's you know? hard. There's so much demand. It's so, yeah, and, and... They're, they're just like, here's my price. Right. And I'm like, <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> So many zeros. Yeah, so many zeros. But oh, what am I gonna do? You, yeah. you know, I need you. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but then after when, but it was just me, and I'm like, okay, I need to basically find a place where I can grow a team with a culture. Yeah, that I can be on the road, and you know, they're not gonna go crazy and leave. Yeah, and so I heard about Communitech in Waterloo. Okay, and I went to visit. I just drove down there and I went to visit, and I met this this man named Harry. And he was starting this program called Accelerating Social Cause Entrepreneurs. And it was an, excel, uh, an incubator. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's actually kind of cool. It fits. So I went home and I really didn't think about it moving or anything like that. Yeah. But then they called me and they said, look, you got to be here. We're starting this program. We want you to be in the first round of, um, of our companies. Yeah. We're going to provide mentorship. We're going to provide you space. We're going to help you hire your team, et cetera, and help you grow to the next stage. So is this, help me understand, is this a government thing or is this a, it was, it's a, it's it was a, a private individual that's, oh, you no, know, so it like, was, it was run through Communitech, which what's is, that? which what's is, that? Gov- it's a RIC, it's like a government funded, um, incubation space and program for entrepreneurs. Okay. So it's like but this associated thing. with the schools or not at all? Um, I think Ascent, Accelerating Social Cause Entrepreneurs, I think it was in partnership with Laurier mm. University okay. um, because we were able to hire some students through there. So there was definitely some uh, partnership of some sort. Now, I, I was kind of on the fence and he's like, no, come on down, come on down. And I packed a small suitcase, like literally the size of this, less than the big of this table, as mm. big as this table. Because I was only supposed to be there for three months. The program was three months. And I've been there three years now. So after the program, I I stayed in, I got a new apartment. 
and then I uh, we got our own space um, and then we've been kind of growing since then we also moved about a, a year and a half ago into the accelerator center which is which is another organization similar to Communitech but it's for more um, companies that are past the startup phase because we're now in the phase where we're a small business right okay. so we're but you're going yeah we're going mm -hmm. um, we can stand on our own but we still need um, help to bridge the gap between um, okay you've got a proven product blah 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 you have customers your your break even etc and now viral virality right scaling now right. it's scaling, scaling yeah which is the hard part it's the hard yeah. part yeah it's yeah. definitely hard part it's coming yeah. it's good we're we're basically um in our app we have 12 life skills categories okay so people are collecting these guides these card decks in categories like social personal care shopping travel and that's where we partner or, or i guess we can use um we get sponsorship or our customers or corporations in these categories so cibc is in money management colgate is in oral care etc cetera, etc cetera. so we have a template template in each one of these categories of how we work with these verticals so every airport we're just replicating what we've done with toronto pearson right but with their site so their photos their instructions etc yeah. um so now i think we're in five airports in in canada and the u.s um restaurants we we our first was tim hortons then we had a and w hmm. now we're talking with some others and we're now beginning to crack a really interesting part of the equation, which is integrating with these um, clients with their offering. Mm -hmm. So on their website, at their stores. So if you go to Tim Hortons, for example, we want to be on the desk, like literally get yeah. Magnus cards here. Hmm. Um, at Toronto Pierce, if you go there right now on the big screen, we're on the big screen, Magnus oh, yeah. Cards. Wow. If you go to sign into the Wi-Fi, we're there. Yeah. So Toronto Pearson's been amazing for for really. It's okay. It's going still. Oh no. Oh, oh no. It's just the, uh, no, it's okay. That was just the connection between that and that. But it's. Uh, I think well, that, the audience is okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And and so. Yeah. I forgot what I was yeah. So. <laughs> It's, uh, it's an amateur operation here, you know, so we've got some, <laughs> some hiccups. No, you were talking on the big board. You're on the big board. On, the, on every board. Every board. So it wow. cycles through ads, and then we're there. So people, like my friends are traveling, and they'll yeah. take a picture <laughs> beside it. Yeah. Like, I know her. <laughs> wow. So it's, uh, Pearson has been great. Great, great, great. And, uh, and then we're in Winnipeg Airport, uh, McCarran Airport, which is in Las Vegas. They're going to be launching in the new year. Las Vegas is going to be great. That's wow. like pure entertainment um and then san francisco airport that's going to be great um and then we're talking with uh, some really exciting other partners as well we've got over 35 corporations that are on board now wow and we want to hopefully uh at least double that in 2019 wow okay so now you've moved into the u.s a little bit yeah okay. colgate so was our on. first u.s partner colgate yeah. palmolive is based in new york yeah um so they're right on uh, uh what is it park avenue <laughs> so I'm I'm walking so down Park to Avenue. Me, I'm like I'm a Scarborough girl <laughs> in Park Avenue, wow, and awesome. uh, it's pretty cool because you know I go back and forth a lot. So like some months I go there like three four times a month um, because the relationship is really key too. And we want to like what's really key with all of our clients is that they're as dedicated um, to making a difference. Right. Like they're just like what you were saying. It feels good, but also. It helps them to extend their brand into a market right. that they previously weren't uh, catering to. Right. Like Colgate's brand promises, everyone deserves a future youth can, they can smile about. There and you there you go. They nicely. need to exactly. They need to be inclusive. So, yeah. um, so there's New York, and then there's we. We also have a New England Aquarium in Boston uh, as a uh, as a partner. Yeah. And then we have now in Buffalo since we won forty three North. We've got a bunch of introductions there, so yeah. we're we're going to be working with Oshai Children's Hospital, which is like card decks on blood work and going to the emergency room and 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 allergies and and um, uh, you know when you're sick or how to how to handle anxiety, so things that everybody deals with, yeah. but just mapping it out so that it's something that somebody with autism can can digest, I guess. Um, and then also, you know, there's, is there's just so much, when you walk down the street, everywhere that you pass, 
is a potential client. Yeah. Everywhere. And yeah. our goal is literally like our hmm. we have a character. We have a character named Magnus. Um, he's in the app and he was designed by me and my brother. So I drew out the, the hat and the shirt mm -hmm. and the pants and then Troy chose which ones he wanted to make this character. And I think he's an amalgamation of all the video game characters that we <laughs> that we like. Yeah. Um, uh, and our goal is to magnify the world. Awesome. <laughs> Have you ever thought, you know, one thing um, I always notice with this type of technology, I'm not the only one, is like is called the curb cut effect. Have you heard of that? Uh, Maybe it's yeah, not a thing. Maybe I think that's so. just what I call it. I, I, but, is when like so, other people adopt right well yeah. the curb so curbs are cut yeah. out for people or the intention was for, for people with wheelchairs right. right that's the intent yeah but the thing is is it actually helps everybody yes right so even people just walking i'm sure there's less tripping right now people kids with bikes or people with strollers or people with carts right. can use it too right so i'm wondering have you ever thought about like a similar paradigm but not necessarily targeted at people with autism, like, because I need, like, I, I know I use YouTube and all that stuff for, like, my dryer just broke. Yeah, okay. Right? So I had to, I had to look it up. Like, yeah. You know, so have you thought about maybe, um, like, expanding into that? Because like you said, every, almost everybody's a potential client, right? And not only that, I mean, it's how we all learn. Like, you right. mentioned YouTube, like, yeah. this is how we learn, uh, through visuals and through instructions and through guides and through following along with those guides. Right. When you buy a furniture in Ikea, it comes with a step-by-step -step guide, which right. I always suck at, but Troy's really good at putting them together. Yeah. But yeah, no, definitely, it's part of our, our technological roadmap, our business expansion is to look at other groups. I mean, even across the special needs spectrum. Right. So, dementia for example. Yeah. And then Magnus becomes, maybe there's another character, Magnolia, or yeah. maybe people can make their own avatars. Like yeah. there's just tons of possibility. And then if you look at neurotypical people, yeah. um, kids, kids, yeah, you know, like exactly. this is, uh, there are people who are terrified of, of letting their kids take public transit yeah. when they turn 14 or 12 or whatever it is. Yeah. And so we have a bunch of transit partners, Oakville, yeah. Grand River, Met yesterday with Brampton, Mississauga, and Peel. Not yesterday, Friday, and uh, and so I think it's def there's cross plot or cross group uh, applicability, yeah. definitely, and um, and also language, like so we now have uh, uh, English, French, and Spanish capability because we're in Canada and the U.S. But we're looking at Mandarin. We're looking at uh, all of these languages that are not only in North America but in that enable us to expand in Asia. And in and in Europe, and so it's it's just really, really exciting possibilities. But we have to have a laser focus and and on execution, yeah. because to get all to do all this stuff at once is just impossible. And so we've been you know growing slowly, uh, well not slowly, but moving ahead at a good pace, mm -hmm. so that uh, we don't overstep our resources. But um, but you know every time I present. Um, I have somebody put up their hand and say, this, uh, my daughter could use this and she has this, or my, my son is, doesn't have any sort of challenge at all. Or, yeah, you know, I've had some ladies saying, yeah. speaking, putting up their hand they say, well, my husband, yeah, <laughs> he doesn't, he, he really sucks at doing laundry. Yeah. And you know, I was going to say earlier, <laughs> like your brother likes step-by-step -step instructions. Yeah. And I was saying, that's not really a disabilities thing necessarily. Lots of people like like instruct like i knew someone um they didn't like maps yeah they like um uh instructions yeah. turn here go here turn here yeah. right versus yeah. whereas i don't like that at all my mode i like show me where on the map it is and i will figure it oh, out oh interesting right it's just a different way it's just of some doing different things. mode and you know i often and that's why i'll say cognitive special needs as opposed to disability most of the time right. because i don't yeah. even like the word disability has yeah, a little bit of a negative connotation as if right. they're not whole whereas i think they have all the pieces right. that we have it's just that it's a different setup right. it's a different it's just a different way of viewing the world and, and quite frankly i think we're all on the spectrum to be honest well everyone <laughs> has their yeah. like disability or you know not everyone's great at everything and exactly they require different things everybody and... needs assistance in some way and like yeah. you're saying with the map i'm i'm the step by step so if there's a song which is like yeah. uh you know how like some music has like an instruction like jump to the left right stick your arm out <laughs> i like those right right <laughs> 
where you don't have to kind of I love uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> but um not that I can't dance or anything, but I yeah. just I I love knowing yeah the next step. Yeah. And yeah. it's actually something I've had to contend with personally because I used to have or even to this day I'm I'm working on it. I would have great anxiety if I don't know what's going right. to happen yeah. in any situation. Yeah. So I would drive my family nuts and like, so this could happen and this, and what about this? And like a chess, yeah. it's like a chessboard. Yeah. All the possible outcomes yeah. I'm going through at and all times. It can times. make you go crazy because there's an it infinite can. number of things that exactly. can happen. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So in my yeah. spare time, I'm studying um, cognitive uh, psych- like behavior therapy and psychology. And okay. I just want to, like I'm interested in the way the mind works. Yeah. In particular, understanding how I can be better um and all and how um how human beings are in general i think there's so much that we don't know yeah. but i'd like to know as much as possible <laughs> you know one of the most interesting courses i ever took uh-huh. was towards the end of my grad school and it was a brain psychology course oh cool okay and it was it was it was so interesting right just talking about um psychology but anchored to physio physiology so right. f- like so, for example, we talked about like brain aphasia, where you're missing. Um, so, there's a famous case of this guy named Tam okay. from the 1800s. He was a patient, and he could only say the word Tam, okay. right? Because he had it was this area called Broca's area that he okay. had a lesion on, and that was the speech center. So, the thing was, he wasn't like he wasn't stupid. Right. He just it, it, the speech part of his brain was damaged, so yeah. he could understand. And follow instructions, right? And things like that. And he had lots of other cognition. Right. But he couldn't speak. Right. Right. Or there were uh, like face blindness. Have you heard of face? So there's a special area in your brain Mm -hmm. that that recognizes faces. It's special hardware. Yeah. Right. And can you imagine looking at someone's face and but not recognizing them you know sometimes it's, that it's actually happens to, to me yeah <laughs> yeah but i don't, there, I don't but know there's because it, it could be well i think there's maybe there's people who are not so good with faces yeah yeah, or yeah. But, not there's, so good but there's with names. Not, but then there's like a yeah. clinical thing like yeah i'm looking at my mother yeah and yeah, yeah. I don't know that she's yeah. my mother right? yeah 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 and that just to think that would be about terrifying. that, yeah, yeah, just to think about that stuff. Yeah. And you know what was interesting? So this one case, this guy didn't recognize his mother, but as soon as she spoke, yeah, then he recognized her right away. Right? It's, so it's thinking about so the brain, that way, the it's brain so... is so fascinating. And I just so every yeah. single night I'm listening to a podcast yeah. or a lecture. <laughs> yeah, it's so amazing. And I'm just like now. learning and learning and learning and learning and. You know, there's so much even outside of that. Like, there's so many different subjects that I'm interested in. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's why this year I'm really focused on having, like, a work-life balance so that mm. I can do the things that I, I need to do to sustain my personality as yeah. well as, you know, my business, which I'm very passionate passionate about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So can you talk about your... Um, are you able to talk about your company, now? like your structure? Like, what, what, kind of, what kind of people are you have... Working for you now, like what kind of yeah, positions? Yeah, so kind of, okay, so let's see. I'm what, the, what was the progression? I'm curious. The progression. Yeah. Oh, geez. So you had well, you were you had one, and then you're down yeah. to you again. Oh my gosh! It's, well, it's been it's been like this. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we've had uh, you know four up to four people, and then we went literally back down to one, and then yeah. we had seven, and then we like yeah. it's just been like that, mm. and it's I think it's due to. Um, I think the early stage, the struggle was due to flaws in my leadership style, I think. Okay. And just being honest, yeah. I think that I tend to be very much like, this is what I have to do. And you guys figure it out. Just figure it out. Right. Like, what do I have to, like, I have to tell you? Like, <laughs> yeah. so it's just, and so, and then frustration would arise when I didn't get what I was, what I was envisioning from them. Mm. But that's because, probably because I didn't give them clear direction. Right. So, you know, I, I tend to be very harsh on myself, but I think that it was a big part of it. So that has been one of my biggest struggles, to be honest, is retaining people. Um, but I'm getting better. Okay. I'm getting better. I think we've got a team now that... I really jive well with. Um, we've got uh, Vivian, who's our project manager, and she will basically, after I sell the company, she will work with them to develop the card decks and manage that whole process, which is about you know six to eight weeks process. It's it's quite uh, detailed, and she's yeah. very detail oriented, and it, she's she's got about twenty years of experience. Mm. She used to work at Sun Life, and um, and I think that makes a difference as well. It's working with people who um, I don't have to 
micromanage right. or anything. Like they wow. know right off the bat, like this is what we have, you know. Yeah. And you yeah, got to pay for that. You got to pay for it, exactly. And you, I couldn't yeah. before, but so mm. we've got Vivian. Um, we've got Valentin who's uh, heading up a tech team. So we've got, uh, yeah. he's got the designer, he's got the UX, he's got an architect. Um, he's actually based in Costa Rica. Okay. So we're going to be bringing on board uh, a tech guy this year on our team, but up to this point it's been outsourced. He's in mm. Costa Rica. Um, he's fa- him, him, him and his team are fantastic. There's a little bit of a time difference, but yeah. it's not as much as it would be in India or China. Yeah, yeah. Going so, up and down is not so bad as left and exactly, right. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And I have an excuse to visit, and do a site <laughs> visit, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> which I haven't done yet. But <laughs> okay. um, and, uh, and then there's um, Angelica, who's on social media. Uh, we have Cynthia, who's a, a graphic designer and editor. We have Heather. Um, Heather's a copywriter, and, and she also kind of dubs as admin assistant. Uh, we have Debbie, who's our treasurer, who's just button down finance, like button down. Every, like, monthly reporting, quarterly reporting, uh, yearly state, all the stuff, budgeting, everything. Yeah. And, uh, and then we have our board, of course, which is consistent of three people, me, Julie, and another excuse me and uh and then we have um a bunch of contractors who report into the full-time team so it's uh it's kind of a it's a web it's a growing web and we're bringing yeah. more people to a full-time position this year with the 43 north win especially um one of the goals of that competition is to hire people yeah. like they wanted to see that your plan was to hire so they we're probably gonna... want you to hire Americans, though, right? Exactly. <laughs> but, that, but that's a good thing because we yeah. wanted to launch yeah. in the U.S. And now we have an incentive. So anybody that we hire is tax-free in mm-hmm. the state of New York. Yeah. So, you know, Huge. it's great incentive for them to come on board. And we're looking forward to bringing on uh, an IT person, uh, a marketing specialist, and another salesperson mm-hmm. uh, within the next year. So a, a minimum. Yeah. Because that must have been a challenge for you not having a tech background. It was a real Basically challenge. Basically managing a tech company. You know, yeah. even now, I, I, I am. it's not my area where I'm totally comfortable. I'm comfortable with people. I'm right. comfortable with the people, especially as their parents. I'm comfortable with uh, CIBC and Colgate people. Yeah. I'm not as comfortable with technology. Mm-hmm. And so... I, if when it's me having to deal with it, I, yeah. I become very almost neurotic mm-hmm. <laughs> and I'm mm-hmm. like, but, 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 but what about this? And explain this to me. And we'll, yeah. <laughs> I don't get it. Yeah. And then that slows it down. Yeah. So now being able to have somebody who is better at that. And, you know, I think that's, that's part of the growing process too of an entrepreneur yeah. is just to recognize you can't do everything and it's on your best interest to do everything. And you're not the best person to do everything. Right. So there's people, I'm I'm hiring people who are better than me. Well, that's in, the idea. Yeah, right? in positions. Yeah. So then you're, you can kind of pull back a little exactly. bit. Exactly. And, 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 and have a life. And, and have a life and go and play with clearly. goats. Yeah. <laughs> like I did yesterday. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Good. Good. So what's, so you're moving into the U.S. What's, what's next after that i mean well uh so we want to replicate uh our model in the u.s so yeah. we, those 12 life skills categories get more clients build the user base in the u.s build mm. the team in the u.s and you know we're going to start off in northeastern u.s just because i can fly and drive there really easily um then we're going to move midwest and then we're going to move across the states mm-hmm. after north america is conquered we're going to look at english spanish and french speaking europe because there's direct correlations between how we live right and it's it's a little bit easier in terms of culture yeah um and australia yeah and uh and then in the in the not so far future hopefully we're going to look at asia and africa wow um but those are markets that we will have to we're going to have to start doing research and learning about it now but we yeah. probably won't enter until Right, because it's, so, it's going to be so, so different. different. So different. We we did a, I don't know if I told you, but after Centennial, we did a consulting uh, arrangement in, a consulting contract in Vietnam. So, <laughs> what, so what was the Okay, so um, we were still exploring <clears throat> the model, the business model, because if you remember when we first met, we didn't yeah. really have... We didn't have a B to B model. We had a B, sorry, we had a B to C. Yeah. So right. we were I like, okay, you. let's try and sell to, let's try and get the parents to pay a monthly subscription. Right. So that didn't work. Right. Didn't work at all. 
Right. Yeah. Because, you know, people with special needs are cash strapped. And there's so many is. people already are paying monthly this. Exactly. Netflix, gas bill, exactly. phone bill. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, no. It's just too it's too much. So yeah. we found a, a better and I think a smarter route through the through the customers, right. through the uh, corporations. Right. So but at that time, after Centennial, we were still exploring, okay, how can we structure this as a business? Yeah. So at that point we received um we were re- an organization in Vietnam reached out because they had got a grant through this program called Grand Challenges Canada. And the grant was to help them develop a diagnostic tool for autism. And because we had a connection somehow through some third party, they reached out to us and they said, can you, you know, we'll fly you out. Can you show us how to um, do some user testing and, and structure our conversations with the users, et cetera. And we're like, sure. So I went out there th- three times to Vietnam, uh, all expenses paid. And it was just wonderful to see how people with autism were living at the other side of the world. Same problems, same Mm -hmm. challenges, but much different system and culture and, and supports. And it opened my eyes to the fact that we cannot be global from day one, um, in terms of, um, our focus like we can have users all over the world they're free to access our program because it's an app but we marry the content to where the users are and we can't have Vietnamese corporations creating content yet because we don't properly understand that uh, the way that they live yeah so it it became kind of a it was a wake-up call for me because I'm like okay we really gotta focus on capturing this proving it here and then we can expand outward Mm. Well, it just makes sense. But right? it was a great experience nonetheless. Yeah, I bet. Like I was there, Carmen. I, I, I went to an autism center in Vietnam and there was uh, 50 or so kids. Mm. And they all, I showed them Magnus cards and they all came over and they were pressing the sound button because there's audio that reads out the text. Yeah. And they were pressing it and they were saying the words in English. And I'm like, man, this is also a liter, a, a liter, English yeah, literacy tool. That's, well, that's what yeah. I'm saying. There's so many applications. Yeah. It was so cool. Yeah. They're like refrigerator, refrigerator, yeah. refrigerator. And I'm like, you guys like this? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, yeah. they're so cute. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. What, uh, how long have we been going? Is it, uh, what time is it? It's about 11 now? 11.05. Yeah. Wow, okay. So, But you, your day has cleared up, hasn't it? So uh, uh, we can stay. Yeah, we can, I can stay a little bit longer. I do have yeah. some work to do. Probably, okay. probably well, maybe. We'll go for maybe another few minutes yeah, and yeah, we'll yeah, wrap yeah. up. Let me just can, I have, can I have some more? Yeah, let's, uh, let's have a little break. Okay. Well, I never some... get tired of talking. Good, good, good. <laughs> I hope you're having fun. I am having good. fun. Yeah, I'm having yeah, fun too. Yeah, good. Yeah, cool. <laughs> and the conversation, like it's it's mm-hmm. going where you want it to go. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, with these types of conversations. It's just natural. Like Vanessa's like, oh, are you writing down questions? And I'm like, no. You just. But it feels like I'm just, you know. Yeah, you like just I, talk and you just you follow the path of where our things yeah, go. And, and it honestly feels like it hasn't been six years <laughs> since I saw yeah, you. Yeah, well, time. <laughs> You know, what I find as well, as you get older, time goes by way faster. It does, right? like a year, like it's almost January. It's almost 2019. Yeah, it which feels is like it, 2018 just started. Yeah, yeah, I know. Especially when you have to, like, when I'm meeting, like, I have to meet sales targets every month, right? Because we make a budget every for yeah. every month, and when you have to meet a pretty hefty amount every single month. It goes by like that. Yes. And I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's the end of the month and I haven't had anything. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. <laughs> okay. So what else is going on in your life besides um, all this business stuff? So you're trying to have more work-life balance now? Yeah. And... Yeah. So I'm trying to like have my maximum amount of health. <laughs> okay. That's good. <laughs> a maximum. So exercising. I... Exercise. Yeah. What do you do um, for exercise? I go to the gym. So three where, times where do you a week. Go? Or so, you live in Waterloo, Yeah, right? but okay. I go to LA Fitness. So Hey, I go to LA Fitness too. Which one? Uh, uh, Eglinton and uh, Warden. Oh, I go to the Kennedy Commons. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I go to Kennedy Commons and then next door is Chapters. So oh. I'll read and read and read and read. Yeah. <laughs> so you can find me usually after the gym. I'm like in, in one of the book. little like aisles or whatever yeah. or having a coffee and just reading. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Exercise so, is so important. It's so important. So like you, I will go, I go crazy if I don't. Me too. I don't sleep if I don't like, exercise. I hate the winter because, so I cycle 
and like a good hour. So, like sometimes oh, I'll crap, even that's good. I've been I cycle. I, I couldn't do it more than twice a week, but even up, I go up to Markham from Scarborough to Markham. It's like twenty two kilometers. Holy crap! But it don't it it takes me forty minutes to drive uh-huh. and an hour to bike. Huh. So it's and probably then, because of all the traffic, right? Oh man! Unless you're you're disaster. going as fast as a car. I am. I'm, <laughs> the <laughs> average speed is the same because yeah, so yeah. they go <laughs> drive past yeah. me and then they wait at the light. Yeah, and then yeah, I, yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. Hi. yeah. See ya. But that's right? great for your legs and oh. lower body. But oh you know gosh. what? The whole day I'm at work. Yeah. I am just like zen. Yeah. No anxiety. No, not that I'm an anxious person, but just. You know, I'm just sitting there. I can concentrate, yeah. focus more. Yeah. I am Whereas, an anxious person uh, yeah. by nature. Yeah. So when I, I work on the morning, and then when I get to work like you, I'm yeah. zen. And exactly. I just feel great. Because you're a little tired yeah. and your brain is yeah. going to... Yeah. Oh, it's, it's exercise is so important. And, uh, and yoga. So mm-hmm. yoga is really good. Um, okay. Especially for like mindfulness. I don't know if you've heard of that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. Because <laughs> it's, it's so... There's so much distractions. Yeah. You know what? I read this book recently it's a good book you should check it out it's called the best interface is no interface oh cool have you heard of it no it's just about <laughs> um it's a ux guy okay pretty sure um that he wrote there's too much um there's too much focus on screens as part of the solution where it's like only this and right. so it's part of it yes. but there's lots of other stuff yes that okay you can do. yeah 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 for example he would say like um he would uh, these cars now have apps where you can open the door with an app. Okay. But think of it. You are you have a bag of groceries. Yeah. So you want to open your car door. So you're going to hold your groceries, get in your pocket, open yeah. it up, do your password, yeah. find the icon, yeah. click the icon, scroll <laughs> up, unlock the door. The door. <laughs> right. So he's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. That's not how he, yeah. is, it should yeah. be proximity. Yeah. Right. You get close to the car, boom, it's open. That's right. right? That's right. But anyways, I, there's this chapter in the book where he illustrates how much we're distracted by, so he writes it, he's like, it's like two or three pages of just a, a story. But in the text, he embeds all these like, no, as if you're getting a notification. Oh, cool. like, like Joe just texted you. But yeah, in yeah, the yeah, middle yeah, of yeah, the yeah. text, right? And you're yeah. reading this. And it, it was so, it, it, it hammered at home so clear about how much distractions there are. Yeah. I went on my phone, turned off all my notifications. Really? And I was like, this guy's right. Like I am at work, you just get all these dings and oh, constant things and you just got to turn it off. And you know what? You kind of train your mind because even when you don't get a ding, you're, you're looking, like, did I get a ding? Did right, I miss a I ding? Know, I know. And so that's <laughs> yeah. my, that's anti-mindfulness. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? Even to the point where you're going to bed, you're in your bed and yeah. you're checking. The last thing you do is check. It's like, what am I? And you see it. You're, you yeah. step outside yourself and you're like, I am so reliant on this thing. Because the other day I, I went to a spa with my friend part of the work-life balance yeah. and I put my phone in my robe pocket <laughs> and then I went and gave back my robe at the end and so Uh-oh. they put it in a huge pile of robes oh. I'm like oh uh my phone's in one of the robes and I was panicking and I'm like yeah. please find it please find it please find it and I was like if yeah. I lose my phone I lose my life that's yeah. how I felt yeah <laughs> all my I, I, pictures yeah, yeah. well it's all up in the cloud now anyways though but I hope I, so yeah, I, I had the same thing at the gym <laughs> yeah. Cause I had I put my shoe, my phone in my shoe. Yeah. For some <laughs> while reason. you were wearing it. No, no, I was oh, okay. changed and I put it in my okay. shoe or so, for some reason. Yeah. And then I put it all and then I was like, oh, where's my phone? And I forgot I put it in yeah. my shoe. And oh, I was yeah, it was a little bit of a panic. Yeah. But that's not good, right? Like it's you not shouldn't good. be like it's not good. You shouldn't be uh, like obsessed. And you, exactly. And you know what you said about technology being a piece is exactly how like so. Right. Our app is a piece, right. right? We want to supplement that with events or opportunities for people to get out and socialize. Right. Right. The app is, is great, but technology often presents a barrier to yeah. social uh, interaction. And, you know, can you imagine exactly. if we did this uh, through through a phone or something like that? Or yeah. it's, there, there's Wouldn't less of be. a connection and, yeah. you know, I think it's less of a, 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 not as good of an experience. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it can get a little much, you know? So yeah, yeah mindfulness is yeah. good. Okay, so Mindful- exercise, mindfulness. <laughs> um, what else are we up to? Family, friends. Yeah. Importance, uh, painting, hobbies. So I paint yeah. regularly. I, I paint with acrylics. Awesome. So um, I pull out a canvas and it's the most beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a white blank mm-hmm. canvas mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it can be anything. And so I just, I, I love painting nature. So I'll paint yeah. flowers. That's my favorite thing. 
I'm not too good at animals, but I try. Um, <laughs> but I, I have this obsession with making things as realistic as possible. So I, if I'm painting this microphone, I'll try and get like every all oh, these little things texture. in there. And um, and, I, and I'm also kind of obsessed with improving these skills. So I'll watch YouTube videos or I'll yeah. go to a class. And I just want to, it's like I set little goals for myself, like it's a game. And I yeah. feel like I leveled up <laughs> if I can just do it that, better. Yeah, that's <laughs> so awesome. there's there's the painting and um, uh, I love board games too. Yeah, what? Yeah. Are you a board game nerd? Or, I'm not. So a, how deep do you go? I We're could, talking Monopoly, okay. Settlers, <laughs> right? And then there's even like Pandemic. Uh, so, I, so I'm not so much, but a bu- couple of my friends are. Yeah, like yeah. a buddy of mine, had, he said to me the other day, oh, I have $400 in store credit at 401 Games. Holy crap. <laughs> he's like, I'll buy go, the whole store yeah, of that. He's like, I'll get a game. We'll come over and we'll... Yeah. Uh, but uh, like there's this one cooperative game, Pandemic. Have you heard I've of heard it? of it, yeah. Uh, I haven't played it yet, but I want to. Okay, so then you're yeah. a fairly nerdy then when it comes to games. I That's like a level play... eight game nerd. I haven't though, but I haven't played it yet, but I would. Yeah, okay. Yeah. okay. Settlers? <laughs> Settlers, I haven't. So I'm yeah. only getting into like the strategy games now, yeah. whereas I used to be like a video game strategy person. But right. the board games I'm loving because it's like, um, you know, you're working together yeah, with people. Social. Yeah, social. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you can have board games cafes these days. Yeah. Like you can have a beer and just yeah. like me and my, a friend of mine, we went and we played this Sherlock board game and we were there for like four hours. Yeah. But we saw, we cracked the case and yeah. we're like, <laughs> boom. Yeah. 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 <laughs> we were thoroughly drunk by the time we cracked the case, but it was <laughs> Good, good, good. <laughs> so in terms of uh you know and and then there's more travel so i love to travel yeah um last year was last year last year um like i was telling you we went to peru so climb machu picchu mm-hmm. uh and then this year went to spain and next year thinking another physical challenge like maybe kilimanjaro that would be really i cool. heard that one's kind of easy is it okay I heard, cause i heard you can just walk up like the back of it <laughs> The oh. <laughs> back of the mountain is pretty, it slopes up. You know who told me that is um, somebody I met through you. One of, um, uh, yeah, I remember we had some a security guy come in once, just for one meeting, I think. I think his name security? was Richard. Yeah, he was a security <laughs> expert that came for a meeting at Centennial once. His name was Richard. You remember that guy? No. No, but he was, he had security run. Security guy? Like not a like a guard. Oh, no. okay. <laughs> No, like IT, computer oh, okay. security. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Like, I don't... Like a guy with a baton. That's like, what I was picturing. Like, hey, guys. Like, no, I'm no, not no. his friend. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> but he, he told me that he... he Kilimanjaro, right? That's what he Yeah. Yeah. In uh, Kenya. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. Said, he said you could walk up the back. I'm pretty okay. sure. Okay. Yeah. Well... But it's still... A ch- it's still... <laughs> 20k up a big hill oh so yeah, yeah 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 that's not exactly. nothing it's not nothing right? at all but definitely yeah. not as intense as as machu picchu that was mm. that was tough tough work mm, mm, work 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 but it yeah. was fun I, I i think adventure and building an adventure in your life yeah is so key especially for me i get i tend to get bored easily yeah so even on the weekend i'm like what are we gonna do what are we gonna do yeah. and i you know i'm just i trying to drag other people along in my adventures sometimes yeah. they will come sometimes they won't yeah. then if they won't I just go alone i don't care <laughs> yeah. it's good to have some downtime once in a while yeah but i'm usually good for a day after a day then i'm like okay what's yeah yeah, yeah. What's up? downtime is good reading yeah. in your downtime watching a movie mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> okay so let's say um there's a young person watching this and they're thinking about uh, starting a business or, or something similar to what you've done. What would you tell them? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Just do Just it. Do um, it? Yeah. I, the I, Ni- Nike? The Nike? Yeah. Advice? You know, I, I really love that slogan for Nike. It's kind of like, it's one of my mantras because mm. if if you feel like doing something, if you think of, if you have an idea and you're like on the cusp, yeah. what have you got to lose? I mean, yeah, some Especially people... Especially when you're young. Yeah, just do when it. When you're 20s or whatever. Just do it. And, yeah. you know, there's nothing wrong with failing. Nothing at all. It's Even, true. like, every single failure. I've had tons of failures. Right. And you just, you learn from it and you pivot and you do something else or you abandon that idea and start something new. Yeah. And nobody, who cares what anybody has to say? Just do it. Right. And especially if it's something that you're passionate about and you, you think that you can make a difference in the world... I would say that that's even more of an impetus to just do it. Um, another thing I'd say is um, 
try and be a business from day one. So like in terms of, or not even day one, but close to the beginning, find somebody who's willing to pay for what you're selling. <laughs> and yeah. you know, a lot of, a lot of companies uh, or even in the social entrepreneurship space, they kind of hobble along on grants for year after year after yeah. years, grant, 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 grant. They're always applying to grants and they're depending on the government to fund their idea. Yeah. And it's not it's real limited. unless it's limited. And it's not real unless somebody is willing to pay for it. That's when you know you're offering something of value. So get that right away, even if it's $10. Yeah. <laughs> Our first sale was just $2,500. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. And then you can be able to say that, that so look, somebody's willing to pay for it. Right. And then refine it and build from there. I think that would be my biggest, uh, those two would be do it and yeah. make money. <laughs> yeah, I see a lot of, often I see people trying to do like neat ideas or fun ideas that maybe aren't necessarily connected to a good business idea. Right. And um, and people get into to trouble that way. Right? Yeah, exactly. You're right. You need to have, uh, you need to be thinking about how you, how's cash going to come into this business. Yeah. Right? You need to be thinking about the long term as well as the short term. Like there's, there's a short term goal of, okay, let's get some money and, and build it. Right. But in five, six years, what is it going to look like? And how do you get to that point? Yeah. So, you know, I think something that's aided me in my uh, development was the fact that I was a chess player. Um, okay. So I was, uh, I was champion in Toronto when I was what? 12. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to Google that. Yeah, for no, sure. I, was, I was front page of the Toronto Star. What? Yeah, me and my sister, we won first for, I think we have, if you go to our house, we have all these statues. I think it was like five or six years we were champions. But then one year, and this is something that scarred me. <laughs> uh oh. I was sitting across from this guy. I'll never forget his face. I'll never forget his face. And everybody's watching because it's the final match. Everybody alone, towering over. And, you know, we had been playing for about maybe an hour. And I knew, I saw, I looked at the board and I'm like, oh, shit. In eight moves, he's got me. It's over. Yeah. And I started to sweat. I started to get anxiety. Yeah. Blah, blah, because I, there's nothing yeah. I could do. Yeah. And I forfeit. Yeah. Rather than have him take my king, <laughs> I forfeit right yeah. then and there. And I never... Like to this day, I it's something that because but he might have made an error. He might have made an right? error exactly, and I didn't give him that chance yeah. to make an error, and that is something I learned from that experience. Don't give up. Well, there Do you not go. give yeah. up. You go right to the end, past yeah. that finish line. Go right yeah. through. You don't even stop at the finish line. You go like in track. Yeah, they yeah. They tell yeah. you to keep running, keep running yeah. straight. Yeah. Don't slow down when you get when you see the line. Go right through, yeah. and that is what has been kind of my. Uh, my mantra okay, since then because that was the one that was a big mistake but yeah. yeah my i think that mentality of the chessboard and knowing what every piece does so what yeah. is what is this what is the the marketing piece what is the sales piece what is the this piece and then being able to kind of maneuver these pieces yeah um and just and plan anticipate ahead and, and plan and, ahead yeah. yeah i think that's helped awesome. me it's it's been a hindrance sometimes because i've sometimes i've been hesitant to move a yeah. piece unless I knew. So that, you know, right. that could be a little bit of a bottleneck. You, sometimes you can't plan. Exactly. You can't plan for everything, right? You can't plan for every contingency. Exactly. Because the universe is, there's infinite things exactly. that can happen. And that's a realization that I had to make and grow yeah. and had to be like, I can't control everything. Yeah. I can't. Like recently yeah. I went and I did trapeze flying or whatever it's called <laughs> yeah. on the bar. Yeah. And that was an exercise and look, it's, the gravity is taking you back and forth. Yeah. You can't fight it. There's nothing it. you can do. There's right. nothing you can do. You yeah. can only move within it and with it. Right. So that That's was... That's a good lesson It was a life. good lesson, yeah. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Well, I think maybe should we wrap up? It's been... Uh, yeah. It's been uh, about an hour now. We've <laughs> okay. Been so I think there's we got a, a fair bit of good stuff there. Good. I, yeah. I really enjoyed this. I think it's yeah. the first... Uh, interview that I've done that um, goes between business and personal. Yeah. So seamlessly. Good. And also like goes places that I actually never have talked about like um, outwardly. So yeah, cool. yeah, it's good. 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 I'm glad you had a good time. I had a <laughs> yeah. good time too. Awesome. Okay. Well, cheers. Cheers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.